woman of God. Hallelujah. For 25 years. Hope to have 25 more and more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anyone doing the reflections, Pastor already told y'all to stand inside the wall, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm starting tomorrow, but um, get on the side of the wall. <laughs> um, for I think I, I really hadn't been keeping up with it, but um, for about 18 or 19 years, for 18, for 18 or 29 years, I have been in in this church and apostle and Pastor Anderson. They they are a great blessings to my wife and I. And I want to say, um, even before I joined church, he was my pastor because I used to watch him on TV. <laughs> yeah, I used to watch him on TV before I even came to church. He was my pastor before. And I was telling my wife, um, I was still doing all whatever. You know. mm -hmm. I was telling my wife, you just wait. Now, that going to be my pastor now. Just wait. That going to be my pastor. And probably about a week later, her sister came and invited us to church. So we came to church. And ever since then, I've been running for Jesus ever Amen. since. Amen. And and I, I, want to, I want to thank this great man and this great woman of God for being a character in our lives because um, for them, I don't know where I would be. I can't speak for her, but um, I wouldn't know where I would be, but ooh, I just want to thank y'all for encouraging me, and now this is time for us to encourage and you. I would chose no other, and um, it's just uh, if nobody don't see the real God, God is really using him and her. They're really using both of them. Um, I could sit out there all the time and hear a apostle speak or Sister Anderson speak, and I know that it ain't nobody but the Holy Spirit working through them. I know for a fact that that's them because a lot of stuff they don't even know, but they speak it over the lectern, and I know it's God working through them. So I know that they are really a man and a woman of God. And I advise, and, and we've been inviting people to come, 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 you know, to hear the man and hear the woman of God, knowing that y'all are a woman and a man of God. And God is working through y'all that if they would come, they would see for themselves. So um, I just give God the glory, the honor. And thank God for honoring you and past Apostle today. And like I said, we thank God for you guys. Good morning, church. Good morning. I can't believe I've been in one church for 10 years. <laughs> I mean, it's been a blessing. 10 it's been a blessing, and I just want to thank both of y'all because y'all really have encouraged me, you know, and got me believing in church again, you know, when at one point I didn't, you know, and wasn't going, you know, and y'all have taught me that um, as long as you have faith, you got to have faith and trust and believe in things and believe that God will do it for you. It might not be in your time, but he w it will eventually get done for you. might not be the way you want it, but, you know, he will do it. And I just want to thank y'all for encouraging me to believe in that, you know, and trust in it. Amen. I truly thank God for the man and woman of God. I've been here since 1999. Um I thank y'all for your encouragement. I thank y'all for your prayers. You know, I thank y'all for just teaching me about the Bible because I, I didn't know anything about the Bible, you know, when I came here. I really didn't know anything about God. But I thank y'all for teaching me. You know, you, you've taught me a lot. And you, are, you have truly been a blessing to me. You know, I thank God for putting me in y'all life, you know, because... 
if it wasn't for y'all, I don't know where I would be right now. You know, I, I probably would be dead, you know, strung out, whatever, you know. So I, I truly thank God for y'all, you know, because you have truly been a blessing to me. devil don't want me to do this. But um, all I can think about is what my mom used to say when I was younger. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank him for saving me. I've been gone to, in Virginia for about four or five years. And my mom didn't have a church home. I've always been an a advocate care for my mother because she raised me and she's always been there for me. She's always been the type of person to be in her room. When I go to bed at night, I would hear her praying every night. I would hear her just weeping and crying out to God. And she didn't have no one to, nowhere to go. And when I came here, my mom brought me here. And I seen this man, and I seen him when I was younger at Pastor Paul Thomas' church. And the way that he praised God, it looked so genuine. It looked so true. I didn't know, I didn't know what to believe. I, it looked unbelievable how a person could just, you know, just praise God and and, and not have any worry and, and he would turn right, right back around and shake my hand and you could tell that he'd been through stuff and it, and it looks it felt so real you know I can't take something from somebody that I know that ain't been through nothing you know and it it just felt real when I came here I just don't know how to explain it but the devil been trying to keep me away from life living life you know he brought me back here. I asked God to show me who my friends were. You know, I got jumped by 15 guys in Richmond, Virginia. My head was big as a baseball. I almost got shot. I got hit in the head with a gun. But God kept me. He kept me. I don't want to be a fool and not realize when I should change my life. I don't know who I'm up here for. But don't be a fool and not realize when you should change your life. Turn it over to God. Give it to him. Give it to him. He will save you. He will keep you. He will keep you for your loved ones that want the people that love you. Because there's people that, that want to be here for you. Even when you don't have nothing. You wake up and thank God for peace of mind. Thank God for being able to wake up like he said this morning and wash your body, clean your body, clean your soul so you can get closer to him. It might be hard, but he's withstanding. He will stand with you when nobody else will. I just want to say thank you for accepting my family. I want to be a role model for my daughter, for people who are above me. I want to be somebody. It's not just about praising them when everything look good. Because every time you ask God, he might not just give it to you the way you want him to give it to you. Sometimes he'll take you through something to show you, look, this is where you're supposed to be. I've been calling you all this time. But you've been turning your back on me. So I'm going to show you in the hard way sometime. I'm going to show you in the hard way. The only way I know that you'll listen to me. But I'm going to show you right when I'm going to save your life too. I'm going to reach right in there. I'm going to pull you out. Them guys could have took my life. Them guys could have took my life. But God kept me. He kept me. He kept me to be here to be able to praise his name. And to thank him. And I just want to say thank you from myself and my family and my daughter. I just want to say thank you for accepting us. Thank you. Chile, 
I give God honor. I thank him for being here today. <laughs> After that, I don't know if I'll be able to even just <laughs> finish this because you know how we feel about our children. You know, a uh, long time ago, God showed me my son. He had called, he, had, he kept telling him, Sean, come to me. Come to me. And Sean wouldn't come. And it was like he was standing, you know, beside a tree. And he kept telling him to come, come to me. Could I have everything that you need, Sean? Come to me. I got what you need. And my son kept ignoring him. And it got to the place where God quit calling. And when Sean needed him, he went to him. He, he began to call on God. And God did him like this. And when I saw that in that dream, I began to cry. And I began to cry out to God. And it upset me so till I called him. He was away in college. I called him. I called Mother Thomas. And I called Pastor Thomas. It, because it just upset me so bad. You know, because I never want, wanted God to turn his back on my child. Nobody wants God to turn their back on them. Because if he do, you, you, you shout, you lost. But I thank God. For him being here, and he listening at him telling my granddaughter in the car, this is our new church home. He just don't know what that did to me on the inside. <laughs> to hear him say that, this is, God has given us a new church home. I'm so thankful because, like he said, I was just at home with no place to go. You can't eat from everybody's table. That's my, the way my mama taught me. You just can't eat from everywhere. And I prayed and I talked to God. I said, God, give me a church home. I need somewhere where I can learn, study, and, and, and just fall in love with you even the more. But most of all, God, I need somewhere where I can get delivered and set free. And God sent me here. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful today. You just don't know. I give God praise for the. And you, are, you have truly been a blessing to me. You know, I thank God for putting me in y'all life. You know, because if it wasn't for y'all, I don't know where I would be right now. You know, I, I probably would be dead. You know, strung out, whatever. You know, so I, I truly thank God for y'all. You know, because you have truly been a blessing to me. Devil don't want me Both to do of this. you, you know, and I was just sitting at home, and I was praying the prayer, Lord, send, give, just give me a church home. And Pastor Anderson happened to call me. Out of the blue, he never called me before. I don't think I ever talked to him on the phone, but he called me. And I'll never forget, God sent for me. Lord have mercy. It lets me know, and I'll never forget it. I am special. God loves me. He loves us all. And I'm so thankful to be here today. You, I, I, I can't even explain it. And I hate being late for church. Y'all start an hour earlier than what I'm used to. But my children know I used to leave them. I would leave them. They tell me, by the time I get to church, you better be there. And if you ain't there, you better go to somebody's church and come back here with the program. <laughs> Do no TV, no telephone, no going nowhere, no nothing. And they know I meant business. And he walked down the street to Mount Calvary somewhere one time, but he went to church. And I'm so thankful today that I'm here. I'm here. I don't know. You all know I'm a singer. I'm a preacher. But I think I just feel like just sitting down and just 
laying at the altar and just getting just just I don't I don't I don't I I, I just don't know but I just I, I hope y'all don't think I'm crazy but you just don't know I know y'all ain't up here to 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 testify but it's a part of a testimony y- y- y'all did it God used y'all to do it so I might as well talk about it you know. When I came, when I, when I left home this morning, praising God, telling God, don't let me go back home the same way that I came. But God just sent me home with a greater deliverance, with greater joy down in my soul. And I tell you, yeah, y'all probably thought I was crazy this morning, but I was giving God praise for giving me my joy back. Y'all might not know what it feels like to lose your joy, to lose your dead. To lose your peace. You might ain't never been there, but I've been there. But I'm back home now. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I got my joy back. I got my peace back. I got my dance back. Hallelujah. I want to encourage um, I want to encourage my leaders, my covering on today. Um, I wasn't going to get up here and say anything, but all last week this scripture has been brewing in my spirit about after you have suffered a while, 1 Peter 5 and 10, the God of all grace who have called you to eternal joy in Christ himself, these four things in this scripture he said he's going to do. He's going to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish talking about restoring you and I'm going to try not to preach (laughs) because this is one of my favorite scriptures because I can relate to it because when you have suffered and it seems like in your life that everything that you got to get that is good for you you got to suffer to get it God going to restore he's going to bring back he's going to reinstate he's going to rehabilitate He's going to return those things back to you that in that suffering time and that suffering period that you had to go through, he's going to return those things. He's going to restore those things back to you. Then he's going to confirm it. When you confirm something, it's the truth or correction of something that you believe. And we believe in God. We always hear pastor, sister Anderson, say, I believe God. And I've known them to be believers of God. Because if they won't, I wouldn't still be here. Um, and you know, and, and he's going to strengthen. He's going to make you stronger. Even in this time, these are your latter days. But God is going to strengthen you. And he's going to give you long life to enjoy. That which you are going to get ready to come into. What has already been prepared for you. And then this is the last thing that I want to say. Not not that I want to say. But the last thing that he does in this scripture. It says he's going to establish you. That means now he's going to nourish you. He's going to set up. On a firm, permanent basis. So what you are walking into now is established. It's firm and it cannot be turned around. And also I want to say in Hebrews 10 and 35, because I, I, I put these and apply these to my own life. Because one thing about God, he is a great recompenser. That's my definition. That's, that's my dictionary. Recompenser. He's a great, he will, he will, he said, I don't, I won't forget about you because you have ministered to the saints. When you're giving out, don't look at how fast things are going to happen for you. Just be consistent in what you're doing. And in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. And I have watched these two. Not that I agree with everything because in life you ain't going to agree with everything with, for, with everybody anyway. But the one thing I can stand assured on is these two love God and they, I, I don't see what they do when, I'm, when they're not in my prayers. That ain't my business. And, but I, I know that the anointing of God and the true word of God lives and resides in these two because they have applied it to their lives. And so I'm glad to see that, you know, because I've been here 
whether y'all know it or not, I've been here for 24 years. I came in 1995. <laughs> Didn't become a member in 1995. <laughs> Don't say it, Pastor. <laughs> but I've watched, I've watched the growth. If there, I tell my students, if there is not a challenge, there will not be growth. So if your life is being challenged, that's because you're growing. You're starting to grow. So accept your challenge. My, one of my other favorite scriptures is when Paul says, I rather glory in my infirmities. Because in my infirmities, and I'm going to paraphrase this, that's when the power of God is present in me. That's when you receive the power. If you don't have an affliction, you will not have power. But if you have an affliction, you can bank on that you're going to power. Amen. But you got to have the right mindset about it. Hey, hey, you might not dot all your I's and you may not cross all your T's. But God is a God that looks beyond our faults and he see our needs. So I, I want to say today from Robin, I appreciate you too. Even if it may look like I don't appreciate you, sometimes when you don't hear nothing, that's when... Somebody say, good, uh, when you don't hear any news, that good news. Not the case all the time, but sometimes you know, um, people may not say anything to you, but they're watching your life. They're watching your life. And when they're watching your life and they're not saying anything, if they're applying what you're saying, you're going to see the fruit. You're going to see the fruit. So I appreciate you all. I really do. I love you all to pieces, whether you think I do or not. Ah! But I love you all, and I'm, I'm glad to be in the midst to see the restoring, to see the confirming, to see the strengthening, and see this. And I want to say this, too. Somebody came to me, and they was talking. You know, people do talk. Came to me and said, yeah, people are talking about your pastor driving that Mercedes Benz. And I said, well, you know what? He deserve it. I told him, I said, because you weren't there when he had to sit in that hot sun <laughs> and wait to hear the click to start his car. I said, so any car he drives, he deserve it. He deserve it. I said, because I watched what he had to go through. Might not have known everything, but I watched his life, watched their life. And I said, he deserved to drive any car he wanted to drive. If it cost $1,500,000, he deserved it. So take that. But anyway... <laughs> God is good, and he's greatly to be praised. After those two preachers just came up a while ago, now the doors of the church are now open. You're going to come down and give your life to the Lord. Well, I just want to say, um, 25 years ago, you made the right decision. And every time you hear your testimony about being laid out on the highway, covered up, left for dead, it's amazing how when you said that I refuse to let death or defeat have the last say. You know, I can, I can picture the devil and his isms and schisms having a party. And all of a sudden, they got a text to say that, hey, he's still alive. And they was like, what? After all that he did, drinking the poison, getting hit on the highway. But if you don't believe me, look at the text. The text says, he's still alive alive. Then they got to gather themselves together and go find out if it's true for themselves. And they're looking throughout the hotel. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? What room is he in? What room is he in? And when they get there, he's on his knees saying, Lord, if you be the God I heard my preacher say, my pastor say, then I believe. Then they're walking away saying, dog, we missed another one. <laughs> so I'm here to say thank you for the Decision you made 25 years ago to say, you know, and then I know mother didn't like the other decision you made to come down this way. But she had to have a conversation with the Lord. He had to calm her down church to say that, Mama, it's going to be all right. Why don't you just go down there with him and hang out a little while every year? So I think when she did that, she got, she got a little better. So just want to say thank you. Continue to do what you do. And uh, as um, I heard uh, Joyce and uh, we say a lot of times, I've heard myself say it too, 
uh, his, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Uh, um, Ray Charles said, just make it do what it do. And you're going to be all right. So we love you and God bless you. First of all, I thank God for this ministry. Um, the devil tried to make me sit down, but I'm not going to sit down. Um, I remember when I first came to this church, it was on the storefront. And um, my husband was looking for a church. He was going to a different church. Well, at the time, he wanted my husband. You know, pastor, pastor, he, you know, he married us when we first came to the church. And um, he was going to a different church, and I was going to uh, Rocky Chapel. Um, this was a Baptist church, and we was like, you know, in a, in a Baptist church, you know, they just, if you say hallelujah, they look at you funny, you know. So I said, well, you know, I need to find, we need to find a church together. So the first day I came to the church, I went up, we got prayer, and I just, you know, I just felt so good. I just started shouting and everything, and <laughs> he looked at me, he said, you know, after ch afterwards, he looked at me. He said, what was wrong with you? I said, I was getting my deliverance, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I thank God for this church because if I hadn't have came, you know, um, I, I wouldn't have my deliverance, you know. And I feel like I still have my deliverance. And I thank God for y'all, even though um, I'm not like I've, I know I'm not the, the daughter that y'all want me to be. You know, I don't come like I should or whatever. But don't pray. Just don't give up on me. Keep praying for me, you know. But I just want you to know that um, I thank God for y'all. I'm the type of person. Um, I'm, I used to tell Pastor, I said, I'm not a people person, you know. And he said, well, when you get saved, you know, that that's supposed to change. But I'm still, be, you know, working on myself. So y'all just keep working on me. And I just had to let y'all know that this is, this, is, this is a good place, you know, even though I don't come like I should or whatever. It's not that I don't want to be here. You know, sometimes it's my job and, you know, different things like that. But just keep praying for me and my family, um, my husband. Because this is, this is where um, I know I should be, you know. This is where, this is it. But just keep praying for me and don't give up on me. You know, this is where, this is it. But just keep praying for me and don't give up on me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Pastor, apostle, brother, sister, friend, neighbor, wherever. <laughs> I want to thank God for you. You have encouraged in my life. And because of the encouragement, now I'm learning to give back to encourage you for what you have done. I never forget, I used to visit this church, and then I finally visited about seven months. But the Lord was leading me this way because I was messed up from the floor up. And I went with Sister B because she knew what went down. And God knew my heart because I always loved the Lord, but to know him personally, I didn't. I learned him more personally when I come into here. i never forget the first time you talked with me. And you asked me some questions and I came out of a church that was a woman, and I always said, I never want another woman to stand before the preacher because as women, we have feelings. We don't know how to separate if you are not truly in God. But then when I met your wife, we had, <laughs> we had uh, she was saying, I'll push you away because I didn't want to be attached. You attached to me. But she didn't know me where I come from. But I didn't want to be attached to another woman. I want to be attached to somebody that's going to give me the truth so that I can get my deliverance. So I thank God for you. You are not that way now. We have some fun because she always said, Mary, you're so silly. And I said, Lord, they can call me silly what they want, but I know that my father knew my heart. He knew what has went wrong in my life. But he used you to begin to smooth the rough places that's in my life. Now, don't get me wrong now. Don't get me wrong. 
that pastor know that I don't play with you. I ain't got nothing to joke with you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to still love you after and go on. And I always tell people, if I can love you the way you are. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this ministry. I was introduced to this ministry by my stepmother, Minister Burley Pete, and I just thank God that she extended that olive branch, and I accepted. When I walked through the door, it was an unusual service going on. Um, I made it to my seat, and I don't remember anything that happened after that. And I just thank and praise God. I just knew that this was a sure foundation. Amen. And I just thank and praise God for the both of you. Amen. I thank you. 1999, I joined um, November the 11th, 1999, but I came before then. Okay. And um, I just thank and praise God for you guys. I thank you for your prayers. Um, I just went through something that was, it, it, it seemed like it was horrible, but God just brought me out all right. I just thank and praise God for that. I thank God for the prayers of my leaders, and not just my leaders, the people in this ministry are awesome. The people in this ministry are awesome. And if you want deliverance, deliverance is yours for the taking. Their job is to preach the word, and as he and she stated, have stated, love on you, but their job is to preach the word. It's up to you to accept it, take it, and run for your life. Amen? Amen. And treat you in a way to go and tell you what you should and what you should not do. And it, you at one point rebel against that because you, you're not used to that. Not because you're not listening to him. It's just, you you know, you're not used to a man talking to you. And I felt like I was my own man, I, you know, when I'm being out there in the streets and stuff. And Wow. But just to think, to talk about Apostle, first of all, when I remember being in his office and seeing him shed some tears and I got kind of frustrated because it bothers me when I see him cry or when I see my mom my biological mama cry it bothers me I don't get to see um, my spiritual mama cry she, she tough she, <laughs> she don't want nobody to see her cry but you know sharing tears because of your hurt and your pain to see that you're trying to build something that somebody keep trying to tear down while you're trying to build it so to speak and I said to Pastor, I said, Pastor, you know what? I said, um, mm, if they if they if they want to live right and stay with God, they got to leave. He looked at me. I said, they can't stay up under you if they ain't gonna live right. And he just looked at me and I said to myself, out the woods, I said, that's why I keep leaving the church. <laughs> you know, and I kept looking at myself and saying, Oh, I ain't delivered myself. I left the church behind some crazy stuff. Why? I, I didn't want to listen to him, first of all. And I wasn't listening to him because that's why I left. But behold, through the life that you have lived, you and mom have lived, and the words that you have encouraged her with, and what you have said to me, and what you have told me I shouldn't do, and what I should do as a man, help me to be where I, I am today. I'm still not perfect. I still have some little differences that I got to work on. So he say, which I believe because, but I've learned that, you know, even in God of deliverance and I love my church family. I pray for them every day, every single day, every day, pray for mama every day. I pray for dad every day, every day. I get him a call on the way to work. I say a prayer every day. You know, uh, I, I, I was thinking about mom and, 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 and I said, people always talk about dad. They always talk. They don't never say nothing about mom. And I kind of understood cause you know, mom kind of tough. She was, Kill you like it is and walk off and leave you like she don't care. It don't matter. You either do it or you don't. But I was thinking, you know, how she really would feel that she's talking to people and they're not really catching what she's saying. And I was driving a truck and was coming from Raleigh and started praying for her, not realizing I was recording because I called her on the phone, but she didn't answer the phone. So I really got deep into prayer. Didn't even know where I was. And I think I said at the end of the prayer, I got to get off this phone because I can't see or something other. And man, I, I I mean I was praying hard that I said you had to do something for my mama because this lady is tough. 
She don't want to hear nothing you got to say and want you to do just what she said and that's it. And But after that, I begin to see a difference in her. I begin to see a change in her. And I see now that it, it, it ain't no prayer that she can pray that God won't, won't answer. You know, and, and, and I, I realize I'm where I'm at today because of her prayers. I can feel her prayers. Even sometimes when I don't come to, 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 to prayer, I can feel that she's praying for us. I can feel that she's calling out, she's reaching out to God for us, and she's always praying for the church, always praying for different ones in the church. And that, that, that says a lot. That says a lot for your leader. But to get back to, to Apostle, I was, uh, no, you won't put me on time limit now. I, I, okay. But um, to get back to him, I, I've, I've been a pastor adjutant for 30, 35 years. So when I come here, and, and dealing with him, I was listening to what he was saying, but I was watching him at the same time because the pastor that I dealt with wasn't the pastor that they said it was. I'm going to just leave it like that. Um, you know, their life's concerning. I used to watch a lot of stuff he do, and I was like, everybody don't got doing this stuff, man. He, he, he just like the rest of them. That's what I'm saying to myself because I've seen it so much, so much. But what really made a turnaround was the day that the man supposed to have been fixing his house owed him $500. We was riding down the road, and he said, "There you go. What, 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 what are you talking about? D don't worry about it. Pull in front of him. Cut him off." So we and I did. I'm like, "What's going on?" He jumps out the car. He's on you, 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 you and Brother Boo, come on. He throw the seat. He didn't tell y'all like, exactly like it was because he got to kind of keep it, you know, because he's a preacher now. But he had throw that hand up when he throw that hand up like that. I jumped out the car. He laid a hand, laid right up. The Holy Ghost grabbed him before he could hit him. So I'm, I'm talking about a man of God now. I, I, I'm telling you what I'm what I seen. He laid the hand up on the car and started witnessing to the man. Talking to the man, telling him about the Lord and what he should do and what he shouldn't do. I said, well, Pastor, we need to be talking about the $500. That's what we need to be talking about. Get back in the car, boy. So I got back in the car. Because me and Brother Boo were throw some, you know, we were going to help him out. Because that's what we thought we were supposed to be doing, you know. But, but, but he demonstrated the love of God is what I'm, what I'm getting to. And allowed the Holy Ghost to take up, uh, 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 upon him, take over him. And witness to the man and let the man go. I won't deliver because I'm ready to fight. I mean, I'm just being, I'm ready to fight. But he talks about that, but he don't put it in the emphasis of what he, how, the, how the Holy Ghost really arrested him. And that done something for me because, see, I'm coming from a game. And, hey, brother, we, it's time to throw deuces. You done said it. Let's do what we got to do. But um, I just thank God. I, I, I really thank God for both of you. Uh, it's a lot that I could say, a lot of things that we've been through. But I really thank God for you all. You have really impacted my life. E even at the time where I was married, thank you for being in my life because you kept me at a – yeah, uh-huh. My mama, she, she praises you right now. She said, if it had not been for y'all, I don't know where my son would be. But I just thank God for y'all. And like I said, I can say a lot. Y'all go sit down and let me finish talking here. <laughs> but anyway, I really do thank you. I'm just kidding. I say that for a job. I'm just joking. I was just joking. I was just joking. But really, I, I thank God for y'all. I, I praise God. I, I pray that y'all will stay on the wall. I pray that y'all will keep praying. I pray that y'all won't let get weary and well doing. And and, and I hope y'all don't turn around. Because you turn around and do him like he said going to do me. I'm coming to get you. I'm going to come and get you. I really thank God this morning for, first of all, I thank you for actually saving me. And that is a lot. And I... <laughs> And for our leaders here, I don't, I really, thank you is not enough for, from me, honestly, coming from you. Because I started with, from, oh, in this church, right over there from that post office with him. I used to work with him. And uh, I think I'm the only one that really left. <laughs> that really started, I said, if it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have been over here. Because he can tell you, when I moved up here, I used to walk past this walking down this way to go over there to the job until uh, then Deacon Boo used to holler, my sunshine, he said, Miss Sunshine, come on over. But I will always make my business that I walk past by the church. But when I decided, he kept asking this because he was always witness to everybody. He came over there with his Bible, and he left with his Bible. That's the one thing I can say. It wasn't taking in and everybody, but he... He had always tried to put that word to us. 
And whether they listen or not, and you like, <laughs> it's another story too. But I want to tell you, you might thought I wasn't listening, and I'm still running, like you say, <laughs> still trying to do certain things on my own that I know. He told me God's, I'm God's secretary. That's why <laughs> I try to keep records on everybody, including myself. <laughs> but I do appreciate it, the time with both of you. I said, you really don't know what you have done to my life, even though I might not show it that way. But as you see, Pastor, I ran in here. I had a time this morning trying to get here. Oh, Satan trying to mess with me. I said, I ain't believing it. I wasn't feeling this way, and I ain't feeling that way. That's why I'm running in here now. I said, but as hot as I don't know what out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I don't want to spend the rest of my time in a place like that. So I'm, I'm here, and I like to say thank you to you and every, and even with the church family that's what, what's left. But I know all of us together, it's worthwhile. And I'm glad that I made it here, even though I haven't. Where, where's my deacon over there? They want to know, who are you? I am Mother Sunshine. <laughs> and I'll be running. That pastor let me, like he said, he let me go and do what I'm going to do. But I, he tells me in a minute, when you finish, you know where you're supposed to be at. Mine's a short and sweet. They said, behind every good man is a good woman. Mother Addison, you're off the hook. You really, really are. I love the both of you. I truly do. But Mother Addison, you have to deal with your husband, who is a trip. And then you have to deal with all these different personalities. My hat's off to you. God, I love you. I wish you all the best. And I wish God's strength upon you, your lives. I love y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to sing one day. To, I'm going to sing. Oh. Hallelujah. Lord, I just, I just thank God for these awesome leaders. God sent me here 17 years ago. Se I've been here 17 years, and I know it was a God sent, because God sent me out of a ministry that I was over in for nine years. I was getting fed. I was getting all the word and everything, making me strong. And uh, I was in the warrior's camp over there, God. And he prepared me. Then he sent me over here with transition. But the transition was good. He sent me to the eagle eye prophet, the visionary, the watchman. I thank God. I thank God for being up under this leadership of you, Apostle Kenneth Anderson, and Mother Anderson, two precious leaders that are precious jewels in the kingdom of God. I thank God for allowing me to connect with this ministry 17 years ago. You have, you all both have opened your arms and welcomed me into the ministry. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for praying for me and my family. Thank you for the love that you have shown towards us. Thank you for your endurance, your steadfast love towards us. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in the next 25 years. And I just thank you for showing me the love of God showing me working with me and i truly thank you for working with this one right here lord have mercy and i know that this is god sent where he's supposed to be and you all have did such a wonderful job thank you for all thank you mom i thank you for thank you for the prayers thank you for the prayers and i know that God hears every prayer that you pray because you are an awesome prayer warrior, awesome intercessor. And I thank God for you leading and taking on. And you have gave me the courage and the strength to step in the position that God had called me to do. And I thank God for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to get on to y'all, too. Y'all both have played, played a very important role in my life. I think with the prayer was the most important thing. I know my mom paid, prayed for me. 
I just got to know me. But I truly thank you, Apostle, <laughs> that I truly thank you because, you know, you was, you took on a, 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 a test that, that I know that no other man probably could have done it to have a, a soft heart. Because I had a strong heart. And and I always believe, you know, the way I was brought, brought up, my daddy was tough, uneducated. So it, it fell back on me. So I was I was totally messed up because I felt like in life, since I'm the head of my kingdom, of my house, I felt like. First of all, I contemplated on coming up here. But I couldn't just sit there and not say nothing. But after Vince got up here, I really started <laughs> to go back and sit down. I was <laughs> tired of standing there. But anyway, um, I came to God of Deliverance probably about 14 years ago um, through an invitation of Seal. Um, she would always come down my house and she would tell me about the church that she was going to. Um, and she would tell me about what good times that they were having at God of Deliverance. So um, when she would tell me about the church, it reminded me of the church I grew up in. I grew up holiness. And, um, yeah, and so when I came to the church, um, everybody was running and jumping and hollering and screaming, and the choir was off the chain. And I felt at home the first time I came to God Deliverance. You may think I'm a lost sheep, but I am still a child of God. <clears throat> and I thank God for Pastor Anderson first. I'm going to talk about Pastor Anderson. I thank God for him because even though I'm not here any longer, I know he's still praying. I know they are still praying for me. I thank him for still calling me every now and then to check on me. And that means a lot. Because I haven't joined anybody else's church. At this point, I know I won't. But I don't know where God's going to lead me. But I know I got to get still. And I got to let God lead and guide me. And because I need him for not only myself, for my children. I thank God first for my oldest two girls. When I came here, I had, you know, my four kids, my baby. Was a, he's he's graduated from high school, um, but um, I was tore up from the flow up when I first came to God Deliverance. A lot of things I was doing, I was trying to do it on my own. But when I came here, I got delivered. I was cussing like a sailor. I was doing some stuff, you know, and I would come here on Sundays, still shouting and praising God, but at one time I was trying to do it on my own. But when I stopped and I let God do it, I got delivered. And I realized now that if I let God do this, I get delivered, and I'll, I'll find my way again. And I just want to thank God because I know that not only I need him, my children need him. So if I don't get it right for, for just for myself, I got to do it so my children can have an example to follow. My mother laid an example. And when I look at Sister Andrews, I see my mother in her so much. A true woman of God, I don't care what people say. You stay on his own. You keep being the woman that you are. I've been thinking about you all week long. And I, I and what I think about you is every time somebody get up and they would say, Sister Anderson was hard. Some of us need somebody hard. Some of us need hard people in our life to keep us on track. Because if everybody's going to be telling you what you want to hear, you'll never get delivered. So I thank God for you. And all I can remember is saying you're beautiful. That day when they were telling me, when I went to the hospital, they were there every time. When I went through, he was there every time. My pastor got to, to my, my mom's house the day she died. I thought an airplane bought him there. 
he had got there so fast. Yeah, I'm taking up a lot of time. I'm sorry. But I thank God for each and every one of you. And just to tell you, be encouraged. Be encouraged that, you know, everything that you are doing is the building up the kingdom of God. No matter what they say, you know, if, you, you, if you've been hard, it was needed. You know, sometimes it might not been the way we wanted it to have been, but, you know, we got the, we got the understanding. We know what you really mean. And I, I, I truly thank God for you. I thank God for you. And I don't know, Kimberly must have something to say. <laughs> um, I'm nervous. When, I, when we first came to the church, I was young, maybe like 11, 12. I'm 23 now. I might look it, but 23 now. But um, I'm sorry. Yes. A lot of time, as young people in the church, we make the mistake of not taking heed of the word because we don't understand it. So when we're young, it doesn't apply to me. I'm just here because my mama made me come. <laughs> but I just thank God for having a mother who brought me to church and who still drags me to church because today was a day that she had to drag me to church. Because as I got older, life really, I, I really got dirty out there. And I just got to a point where I didn't want anything to do with God. Because you did this, and I, I don't feel like this is, this is how my life should have ended up. But everything that has happened and everything that has been said today was for me. Because it's rough. Because so, you know, all I saw was a worker coming and going. But I knew then he was trying to bring people in. He loved God. He was a man of God. And I was just going to another church one day, and my granddaughter said, let's go here. You know. And I said, okay, let's go there. But since I've been here, I told you in the beginning, I'm either in or I'm out. But you guys have showed me so much love. You know, you are leaders of honor and respect. You, you've given me the, the, it, the impression that, you know, it's, it's all about love. You guys do so much for us. You know, I come to prayer on Mondays and you praying for us all the time. You know what I'm saying? It builds you up. It keeps you knowing that God is real, God is able, and everything can happen through God. So I appreciate you guys. I really and truly do. That's my one, two, three minutes. I just want to let y'all know that I love you, and I love all of God and deliverance. It's God from whom all blessings flow. I tell you what, I'm thankful to be here at God of Deliverance Ministries. I'm thankful for Apostle Anderson and Pastor Anderson. I came here around in, I think it was 1997 when me and my husband, he wasn't at that time when we first came to God of Deliverance. I remember when Pastor was working at the post office and, and getting off and then he coming in all rushed and he trying to handle and do things. And I'm sitting there like, Lord, I don't know how he can, can do it, you know. But, you know, with God's strength, he enabled you to be able to do that. I've seen over the years how you have grown, you know, in your demeanor and even in the messages that come forth. They're so powerful and they're so learning and they're so mean. And when I first came, yeah, some things were a little stiff. But then when you sit there and you read God's word, God has principles in his word for us. And it's not for our harm, it's for our good, amen? We, we just want to do what we want to do because our flesh want to do what it want to do. But when you listen to what God says, he doesn't put anything before us that's going to be hard. I love this Christian walk that I'm doing. I love my, I love my married life. And I love my single life now. I do thank uh, you, Sister Anderson, for taking a stance, you know, and, and, and not being like 
what people think is the status quo. You never let anyone put you in a box. You know, some people sit there and say, well, the first lady ought to do this, and they ought to do that, and they ought to do this, that, and other thing. But I turned around, and I sat there, and I marveled. I said, because she did not allow people to put her in a box, but allow God to use you as he would have you to be used. Amen. I thank both of you all for being in my life. I thank you all for allowing me to be a minister here at God of Deliverance and being able to serve here at God of Deliverance, you know, and I'm thankful and I consider it an opportunity and a privilege. Now, not only that, but we do have some things that we would like to present to you all at this time. So if you would come forth, I would like to present a couple of things. One of the items I have to present to you all is from the city of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, presented to Apostle Kenneth J. and Pastor Janice Anderson on the occasion of the 25th pastoral anniversary of God of Deliverance Ministries with sincere best wishes and witness whereof I have unto set my hand and cause to be affixed the seal of the city of Rocky Mount this 13th day of July, 2019. That's when it was signed by David W. Combs, and that is the mayor, amen. So this is presented to you all from the city of Rocky Mount by the mayor, amen, amen. Yes, yes. And you all come forward with your presentations for pastors. <laughs> amen, we just want We just want to say that we love you all, and we just love you, love all the teaching and all the chastisement and all that other stuff. Many of y'all might not know, but I'm the one that was, he, he could take me. <laughs> you know, he was going to jack me up <laughs> because of his daughter. But glory be to God. I think I've been here ever since 98, uh, so about 21 years, and both of you all have been the spiritual mom and dad that anybody would ever want to have, you know, um, not just because you will give us the shirt off your back, part of speak, but just because you tell us what we need to know when we want to hear it and when we don't want to hear it. And just walking the walk of faith through all these many years, our babies has grew up in the church and now we're grandparents, amen. But just such a great experience uh, that we have had on this Christian journey. We just love you so much. But on the behalf of God of deliverance, amen. I'm not supposed to go there, but on the behalf of the church, the trustees board, the deacon board, and all the other auxiliaries, we got this very special gift in this box here that I. Come on up, but help us. God has already showed me that. New things is coming up. I told them I, the, 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 the morning after the uh, uh, anniversary, that Monday morning early, God showed me the, the ground was broken. And <laughs> saying, they said, it's true. I told them. That's right. I said, something I'm new. Sprouting yeah, sprouting up. It's mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. I wonder. Was wondering what was this all about? Who, what, what's going on? Because it was so real, so real. I tell you, I'm, I'm just proud of my children, and, and I'm proud of all of you. Oh, you just, you know, you just rubbed off. Everything is just rubbed off together. You just, just together. Amen. And you know, unity means a lot. When you unite, that means you and I, you and I, you and I, you, unity, two are tied together. Woo, hallelujah. I like that. Woo, <laughs> you and I are tied together. That's right. Hallelujah. Right. Okay, let me, because I know everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. But I'm just so happy to, 
I just, I, I just don't know what to do with myself because <laughs> God has used them so much, Amen. you know, Amen. just Amen. looking back on it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, and God wants you to know, I want y'all to always remember that what God said, he meant it. And he made us some promises. And it belongs to you, 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 and I. Amen. So hallelujah. As we go farther, say it. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. And I am standing on his word divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Glory. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. I am trusted in his word divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Yeah, yeah. Every promise in the book is mine. Glory! Every chapter, every verse, and every line. I am trusting in his word divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Oh, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Hey, it's mine. It's mine, it's mine. I am trusting in his word divine. Every promise in the book. Hey, one more time. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. I am trusting in his word divine. Every promise in the book is mine. mine. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give my mama a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.